We begin today the Gemara on the bottom of Chof Amit Beis, about 15 lines from the bottom of the Amit, where it says Itma. So we're in the middle of the sugya, which is discussing Zen Nene V'zeh Loi Chaser. When there's someone that derives benefit from someone else, the example the Gemara brings is if you lived in someone else's house, and you're having a knock because you would have paid for this rent to rent somewhere else, but now you're here for free. But the owner of the house is not losing anything because the room was left empty. It wasn't designated to rent out at all. So do you have to pay him for, the, for, for living there? So that was a discussion. The Gemara tried to bring a few eyes for this. So the Gemara says, Itma, we learned, Rav Kahana, Om Rav Yechinen. Rav Kahana said in the name of Rav Yechinen, Ein etzorech lahalas loischar. You do not have to pay for living there if uh, he's not losing anything. However, Rav Avo said in the name of Rav Yechinen, Tzorech lahalas loischar, not that you had a no, even though he didn't lose anything, but you do have to pay for living there. So I'm going to have Papa, Rav Papa said about this. So we have here two Amiraim that are saying different things in the name of Rav Yechenen. Hadar Abavo, this is Abavo said in the name of Rav Yechenen, Lav Beferish Itmer. He didn't hear it clearly from Rav Yechenen. El Mekloli Itmer. He understood it from something else that he said in front of him. And so he understood that this is Rav Yechenen's opinion. What is it that he said in front of Rav Yechenen? The Tnan, because we learned in the Mishnah as follows. This Mishnah talks about the Gizbar, which is the Gabai of Hektish. And he has all the possessions that belong to Hegdish in his possession. He takes care of it. So if this Gabe now went, and not al even a kaira shall Hegdish. He took a stone or a beam that belongs to Hegdish. So he took it for he's, he's, he took it for himself. Hareze loimal, the halach of me'ila does not apply. He's not misusing the Hegdish that he would be chayev to bring a carbon for it or to pay back an added fifth. Because it's always in his possession. He always uh, uses, he, he has it always in his possession. He doesn't use it, that is, but he, so if he just takes it, that itself is, does not constitute uh, me'ila. Nos however, if he goes and gives it as a gift to his friend, then whom mo'al? So then the gizbar, which gave it away, so now he took it out of the rishus of Hekdish and gave it to his friend. So he's mo'al by doing that. So now once he took it out of Hekdish, once it's out of Hekdish, his friend now that uses it, he's not mo'al. If he took this beam of Hektish and he built it into his house, he's not moil just by building it into his house because uh, it's, it's, it's in the house of the Gizbar. He's not moil. Uh, the, he, the, the Mishnah explains. He's not moil. Unless he lives under it and then he has hana from it. So now he had a no from this kaira, this beam that he built into his house, and he lives under it, and the value of Azana is a Shava Pruta. To be Moil and Hektish is in one of two ways. Either when you give, you sell it or give it to someone else, you took it out of the possession of Hektish, or that you had a Hana of it, that you derived benefit from it. So over here, if he lived under this and had a no of it, so then that will be the Mi'ila of the Gizbar. Now Vahama Shmuel, Shmuel said about this, Vuhu Shihinicha al Piaruba. Over here, when it says that the, the, the me'ila will only be if he has hana from it, that's because what he did was he placed this beam on top of his roof. Let's say his roof had an opening, a skylight, and he wanted to cover it. And he placed this beam on top over there, and he sat under it. So he had a hana of it. But so the point over here, though, is it wasn't built into the house. If it was built into the house and then he, he changed it, he took this, uh, it was a shinui. He took this beam and now made it part of his house. So now he's going to be male in it, even if he didn't live under it, because it became part of his house. Taisus actually says, even if you build it into your house, if you could take it apart and take it out, so then it won't be male either. But the point over here is that he took this, this gabai of hektish, he placed it on top of his roof, and then he, he had a no by living under it. That's the me'ila, and I'll be chayef to pay hektish for this. Now, if Yosef Rabbi Avol came to Rabbi Yechenen, Rabbi Avol was sitting in front of Rabbi Yechenen, the Ka'ama Mishmei the Shmuel. And then he said also, in the name of Shmuel, that what we could learn out of here from this halacha of me'ila is, Zaysei Meres, what this proves is, Hadar b'chatzah haveri shalei if you live in your friend's courtyard, in your friend's house, without his knowledge, and your friend is not losing anything from this, but nevertheless you derive benefit, you have to pay for this. So how is he learning it out over here from this halacha of Mi'ila? Because this beam of Hektish that was placed on top of the roof, Hektish is not losing anything from this. It's a beam of Hektish that even after you put it on top of the roof, it's not built into the house, it's not changed in any way. But even though Hektish is not losing out anything from it, but you are living under it and you're getting a certain value of a Hanav, a Shavu Pruta, 
it's me'ila, and you have to pay. So the same thing, if you have a knock from someone else's house, even though the owner is not losing anything, you should have to pay. Vishasakle, and Rabbi Yechenen, after Rabbi Vos said this, was quiet, he didn't respond to what he said. So from here is where he learned this out. So Ihu Sava Rabavo thought, Midishasik, if Rabbi Yechina was quiet, why is it? Why was he quiet? My delay. Because he was agreeing to what Shmuel said. You're going to be, you're going to be a chayiv, that is. But Veloihi, it's not true. That's not why Rabbi Yechina was quiet. Ashguchi loyashkechpe. Reason he was quiet is because he wasn't paying attention to what Abba was saying. He considered what he was saying to be, uh, there's no comparison here at all from Hekdish to the case we're talking about, when we're between one person and another. Okay, the Rabbe, as Rabbe said, oh, my Rabbe, Rabbe said, you can't compare Hektish at all. Because Hektish, Shaloi Midas, when it comes to Hektish, even when there is no Das from, from Hektish, there is no owner by Hektish, that, by Hektish that's aware of what you're doing, right? Every time you take something from Hektish, who, who, who's the owner of Hektish? It's not uh, something that you could say that there's an owner over there. Even if there's no owner, it's similar to a Hedit where there is an owner that sees what you're doing and, is, and doesn't let you do what you're doing, which means every time by Hektish, the reason there is a halacha of Me'ila, it has nothing to do with the fact because there's something that's going to be missing from Hektish. That's not the point. By Hektish, it belongs to the Eibishter. Rashi says that, it, that there's the Das of the Shechina. There's the Eibishter that uh, doesn't allow you to have any anar from the Hektish. It's not because there is a Chaser the way it is between one individual and another. So the reason why there is a Din of Me'ila by Hektish, even though there is no Chaser, is in no way a proof to the case that we're talking about over here when there's two individuals and if there's no Chaser, you didn't take anything away of a value from the other person. So over here, you would still be Pater. So therefore, Rabbi Vo's, uh, comparison is not a comparison. Right. So over there you'd be potter. Because the chiyav by a hadiyat is not because of the das of the shechina that doesn't want you to use it. By a, by a hadiyat, it has to be an actual chaser in order to be chayiv. So the Gemara brings out now here the continue, continue discussion of different tamiraim. What's the halacha regarding this halacha? Shalacha le Rababa v'azabdu le mori b'amar this Shiloh was asked from Ravuna. He lived in your friend's courtyard without his das. Do you have to pay him for this or not? And again, the, the situation over here is where you're having a no and he's like chaser because it wasn't designated to rent out. So Adahachi noch nafshe until they got an answer from him. He didn't. He didn't answer and he passed away. Noch nafshe the Ravuna. Ravuna passed away. Omale Rabbe bar Ravuna, so Rabbe, the son of Ravuna said, Hochi Yom Ha'abba Mori Mishmei de Rav, my father paskened, and he said this in the name of Rav, Eino Yitzarech Lahalas Leishar. You live in this person's place, and he's not losing anything from you living there, you don't have to pay him for it. And then he also said another halacha, Vaseche Ba'is Miruvin, when you rent a house from Ruvin, so sometimes the halacha would be, Mai Leishar Leshimin. You'll have to pay the rent to Shimin. And the Gemara right away clarifies what this means. What was he saying? Shimon Mayavidite. What's Shimon doing here? If you're renting from Reuven, why are you paying Shimon? Mm-hmm. Says the Gemara, Hachi Kamar, the case over here is Nimtza, Habayas, Shel Shimon. You rented a house and you thought it belongs to Reuven. And Shimon wasn't even aware that you're renting from him. But then you find out that it belongs to Shimon. So then, Maila Loischa, you're going to have to pay the Schar to Shimon. So the Gemara asks, it seems like these two uh, halachas here are a contradiction. Tarti, are these two halachas not a contradiction to each other? Because first you're saying that if you live in someone's house and he doesn't know about this and you're having a no, but he's losing nothing, so you put there. And then it says you live in someone's house, and in this case, Shimon did not even know that you're living in his house. Once you find out, though, that it belongs to Shimon, you have to pay Shimon rent for this. But seemingly you would think Shimon is not losing anything from this. So the Gemara says, no, that's not the case here. Ha, oh, the Kaimel Agra. In the case where it says you have to pay Shimon for the rent, it's because it actually was designated for a rental. So you're, you're causing Shimon to lose that, uh, that profit from the rental. Ha, oh, the Loi Kaimel Agra. But in the first case where Rav Paskin, you don't have to pay, is what we were discussing in the Sugya. Zen Nene, Vizele Chaser. It wasn't designated for a rental, so he's not losing by you living there in this house. So you Potter. Similar thing the Gemara brings also, that was in the name of Rav. Or it's Rav Huna that said this. You live in your friend's courtyard without his knowledge and he's not losing anything from it. You don't have to pay him rent for this. 
And then another halacha he said was, You rent a house from people of a city. So you have to pay the reward, you have to pay the rent that is for the bailim, for, for the owner of this house that you're renting. So again, the Gemara clarifies what exactly happened here. It starts off saying that he's renting it from people of the city. And then it says you pay the owner. Who, who is exactly this owner that you have to pay here? Says the Gemara, what he meant to say is as follows, that you rented and it wasn't directly renting from the owner. The owner didn't, didn't even know that you're going to be, be living there. And then you find out who the owner is, you're going to have to pay them the rent for living there. So again, the Gemara says the same point as before. Tarti are these two points here, not a contradiction to each other. First, he's saying you live in someone's house without his knowledge and he's losing nothing from you living there, so you're potter. And now we're saying that if you find out who the owner is, you do have to pay him, even though seemingly he's not losing anything either. So the Gemara again says, no, that's not the case here. Ha, the Kaimala Agra. If you find out who the owner is, and it turns out that he had this place designated for a rental, so you have to pay him for it. And ha, the Loi Kaimala Agra. But if it's a place that's not designated for a rental, so then you don't have to pay him for it. Omarav Schaire, Omarav Hone, Omarav. Hadar Bachatza Chavere Shalom Yidaitai. This halacha here, that if you live in your friend's property without his knowledge, you don't have to pay him for this because you're actually giving him a, a gain. Not, not only is the person that you're living in his house not losing out from this because it wasn't designated for a rental anyways, but he's actually gaining by you living there and his house is not empty. Because there's a Pasuk that says, Which which means that a place which is Shi'iyah, it's desolate, it's empty, Yukashar, it brings a plague into the gates of this place. Right? So Shi'iyah over here literally means a place which is desolate, but Rashi here brings that this is also a name, a name of a Shin Dalit that causes damage in the, in the house. Mm-hmm. So, so therefore, by you living there, what happens is, so now you are expelling this Shin Dalit that would be in the house otherwise. So you're actually bringing a gain to the person that you're living there by, by living there. I'm a Mar Baravashi, Mar Baravashi said about this, Lididi Chazili, like, I saw this Shindalid in a place where there was no one there, and Umenagach Kitura, and it's very wild, it, it gores like, a, like an ox. Rav Yasef, Omar, Rav Yasef said that there's a different reason why when you live in someone's house, you're causing a certain gain for the person that's living there, even though you're not paying anything, and it's, but it's not a place designated for a rental. Beisa Miasve Yosef, a house that's settled, will stand, will, will, will exist. Because if someone lives there, he takes care of the house. If, uh, if, if no one lives in the house, the place remains empty. What happens if there's a leak or if there's something else going on and nobody's there to attend to it, eventually the house will fall apart. So the fact that someone's living there, you take care of the house. So you just, just uh, an advantage. So the Gemara says, my benayu. What is the difference between these two reasons, the advantage of living in a, in a, in a, in a house, making sure that it's not empty? The difference is the If it's a place that the owner, the house owner, is actually does have some use of this place, he's using it for storage. He stores over there his wood or his straw in this place, and this person now comes and uh, and moves in there. So there's no shade in this place because the the how the house owner is using it for something. He's using it for storage. So as far as that reason is concerned, there's no advantage of someone else living there. But as far as it being settled, that the person sees and takes care of the place and he sees what's going on, there is still an advantage of someone going and actually living there that you're giving a gain to the owner by, by, by moving in there, even if you're not paying. The final story the Gemara brings regarding this whole sugi here. Ahu gavre, uh, so you don't have to pay. No, the whole point of here is that if you move into a person's house, okay. if it was left empty, and he wasn't ever planning on renting it out. <laughs> so, but he's like chaser though. The owner is like chaser. Not only is he like chaser, he has a certain gain by you uh, being there and settling in his house. And, and even though you're nana, you would be ready to pay rent in another place. Then nana, v'zeh like chaser is potter. That's the maskan of our sugi, and that, that's the actual halacha. So the Gemara brings the story over here of what happened. Ahu gavre de bona apadne akalkilte de yasmi. A person went and built himself a beautiful palace where was this? On the property of the Yusayimim. And the reason he built it there is because this was a, a place full of garbage. And the Yusayimim had this place left empty and they had no use of this place. So he figured to himself, I'm having a no. I can gain from this. I can build my beautiful palace here. But Zele Chaser, the Yusayimim are doing anything, anyways, nothing with this. So if they're Le Chaser, I'm allowed to build here my palace. 
But Agbe Rav Nachman La Padne Mine. Rav Nachman went and collected the Apadne. He said, You gotta leave the palace, and the palace belongs to the Yusaymen that you built it on their property. Says the Gemara, why did he do this? Lame because of Rav Nachman. Shall we say that Rav Nachman's opinion is that Adar Bachatzah Chaveri Shalemi Daitai? When you live in your friend's property without his knowledge, Sarech Lalas Leischar. Even though it's Leichaser, but nevertheless, if you have Hanah, you have to pay for this. Says the Gemara, no, that case was different. There was a certain Hanah. Uh, sorry, so there is a certain Chaser. The Yisraelim did lose by this person building his palace here. Why? Hahu that place of this garbage where the Yisraelim had this property. May caught in the beginning, Carmenoi have a diary bay. There were people that were called Carmenoi, it's the name of a certain nation. They were uh, living over there. They were paying the Yisaymim a little bit of, uh, of a rent for, for this place. Or now she has another gear to hear, Kadmenoi, not Carmenoi, but Kadmenoi. There were people there from before that were living there and paid very little rent. So even though now you went and built a beautiful palace and what you have is much more valuable than the little rent that the Yisaymim got, so they lost out very little, but nevertheless, there is, there is some loss that you caused them. So therefore, what happened? So in the beginning, Amalahu or Amalei, Rav Rab, Rab, Nachman said to this uh, person that went and built his palace on their property, Zil Paisinu Yasmi, go and appease them, at least pay them that uh, little income that they lost out by you building a palace here. He didn't pay attention to what Rav Nachman demanded from him. Yeah. So when he didn't pay attention to go and appease them, to pay them this little, Agbe Rav Nachman Lapad So he said, you're living here, you have your palace here, now you have to pay to them the full value of having your palace here, you have to pay for them. Huh? So, but, but there was some chaser. There was some chaser. They were, the, the, he did cause a loss to these Yisaymim because there were some other people that were paying rent for it before, even though it was very little. Mentioned before, some of the Rishayim say when you when there is a certain chaser, even if the chaser is very little, but once there is a chaser, you're gonna have to pay for the full ana that you have. Remember before brought when you make the the, the the walls a little bit black, that itself is enough of reason that you have to pay for the full ana. Okay, going back to what it said in the Mishnah, Ketzad Mishalemis Mashanenis Vachulu. So the Gemara actually is going to focus on the next part of the Mishnah. This is the first Mishnah in the beginning of this Paydex. So there, on Daf Yutzayin and Meralev, the Mishnah there made a distinction between. Actually, it's not the first Mishnah in the Paydex, sorry. This is the Mishnah that we had before on Daf Yutesamit Beis, where the Mishnah says that if the animal eats from the middle of the street, so then. Shein Viregal, the middle of the street is potter, but Mishalem is Mashananis. You only pay for the value of the Hano. But if it eats Mitzide Arachba, if the animal eats from the side of the street, then Mishalem is Mashizika. Then you have to pay full damage of for what it ate. Okay. And then afterwards, the Mishnah also says a similar Allah, Mipesach Hachanos, if your animal ate from the door, from the opening of a store, then you have to only pay mashananis. You put it for the hazik, but you pay for the hana. But if the animal goes into the store and he eats mitaycha chanos, then you pay mishalemis mashizika. You pay f- full price of uh, of what you damage. Right? This is the, the halacha we keep on having here in the in this pedic and in the oh, mesechta. Yeah, that shein viregel is only chayiv if it's in the person's private property because it says ubir bizday acher. Mm. Okay, so the gemara here mm-hmm. will explain what does it mean Which that the point? animal ate. Huh? He pays to the person that owns the, the, the fruits that, the, that you ate. In the, in the Shusarab, you pay Mashananis, the Hano. But if it's on the Tzad Harachva, on the side, then you pay uh, Mashiziki, you pay the full damage. Now, what, what exactly means the Tzad Harachva when it's on the side? And why, if it's on the side, do you pay full damage? Hmm. So the mother brings an Achlekes about this. Amar Rav, so Rav says, Ube Machzeres. <laughs> What it means that the animal ate from the side of the street is that the animal was walking, but it turned away. It turned away from its pathway and it turned towards the side to eat. Over there, you're going to have to pay full damage. So there's actually two pshatim for this. And Taisus here brings the two pshatim. One is what Rashi says in the Mishnah, and then there's what he brings B'Shem Rashi. One pshat is the reason you have to pay full damage, even though the side of the street is also still in the Rishos Arabim, and you should be potter for Shem Viregal. But the reason is because the animal got, went off its regular path and went to the side. That means that the animal is behaving different than it usually does. It's not a tilde of regal or Shem Viregal. It's a tilde of Keren. And Keren is high even in the Rishos Arabim. It's an unusual behem, but the behem goes off its path. Another pshat is that machzeres, even though it is a tilde of shame, but nevertheless, once it goes off its path, it's going to be chayiv to pay nezek shalim. 
even uh, the, the, the halacha of paying nezik, that you don't pay is only when it goes in the middle of the path. But the, mo- the moment it goes off its path, you are chayv to pay nezik shalim, even, even though it's a tol- tailda of, uh, of, reg- of shein v'regel. Okay, that's uh, Rav. Shmuel Lama, however, Shmuel argues and says, Afilo machzeres, nami potter. Even if the animal is going off its path, you would still be potter. You still don't have to pay for the full damage. So now how does Shmuel understand our Mishnah? When it says in our Mishnah that when the animal ate from the side of the road, so there you do have to pay, so when is that? Kagain, the case over here is the Shavakto Lerachpa. The animal left the road altogether. It didn't just turn away, but it, it, it walked away completely from the road. And it went and it stood on the side of the road, meaning it went on the side of the road in a private property. So then you have to pay the full damage because it went into a private property. So then you pay for Shein Vireg or full damage. That was one version of how this Machlekes of Rav and Shmuel was brought. Two Pshatim had to explain our Mishnah. There are others that taught what Rav and Shmuel said. They said their statements, their argument, not in connection to our Mishnah. What happens if an animal is walking in the street and then it turns and it eats from the side of the road? Are you chayev full pay for this or not? Rav says you chayev. And Shmuel says, no, you're still potter because the animal is still in the Rishos Now, Shmuel, Mishalemes, so then the question was asked, Shmuel that says that even if the animal ate from the side of the road, so uh, he still are, should be potter, so what's the pshat in our Mishnah when it says that when you eat from the side of the road, you do pay for the full damage? When do you pay for the full damage? As we said, when the animal leaves the, the road, and it went and it stood on the side of the road in a private property, only then... Do you pay for the full damage? But just the animal turning away from the, from the main road, that's not enough. You're not going to be chayev to pay full damage. You only pay for the hana. Now, most of Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, Rav Nachman by Yitzchak asks on Rav's opinion that when it turns away, so Rav says, you pay full damage. What does it say in the next case of the Mishnah? Mi Pesach HaChanos. If the animal eats from the opening of a store, Mishalemes Mashanenes. You only pay from, you only pay for the hana. You don't pay full damage for this. Now, what does this mean that the animal ate from the door of the store? Pshita, isn't it obvious that this means b'machzeres, that the animal was walking on the road and it had to turn away to the, to the doorway, to the opening of the store. The store is not in the center of the Rishos Arabim. So if the animal is eating from the door of the store, shouldn't that be the, the same as the side of the road? So Rav says on the side of the road, if the animal turns away, you pay full damage. Why over here when it's eating from the door of the store, which is also on the side of the road, and it turns away, why do you only pay for the hana? Why don't you pay full damage? The Kama Mashananis, and the Mishnah says you only pay for the hana, Mashananis, Mashizikaloi, only the hana, but not the full damage. So the Gemara says, whom Moses love, whom Rav Nachman of Yitzchak asked this question, and he gave the answer as well. The case over here is the Kaima Bekeren Zavis. That this store was positioned in a corner which the animal does not have to go off its way to eat. So you have over here the picture in the Rashi. If you see over here, the animal was walking in a broader uh, street. Movig Godel, you see, like it was walking in a broader street and then it comes to a corner where it narrows, where the, where the, where the, 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 the road narrows. And right over there at the corner where the road narrows, the animal is coming from the wider street. And as it narrows, there's a store that sticks out and the animal does not have to go off its path to eat from, the, to eat from what's there at the door of the store. So therefore, over here, you'll, you'll only pay mashananis because this is like the animal doing it in the Rishus Arabim itself. And in the Rishus Arabim, you don't pay full damage. <clears throat> Ikedamri, there's another version for this machloikis between Rav and Shmuel. Machzeres, if the animal turns off its path, Nobody will argue the chayeves, that you'll be chayev to pay full pay, as we said before, Rav's opinion. Ki pligi, when was the, Rav, the, the argument here between Rav and Shmuel? The makze mokayim mirishusay l'rishusay rabim. If a person has his property that's right in front of the rishusay rabim, and what this person did is, he built a wall further in to his property, and he basically designated part of his his, his front yard to become part of the Rishos He was basically mafkir, that area in front, to be part of the Rishos And now in that area, 
in his front yard that he he designated that it should be part of the Rishus Abin, he put down his fruits and vegetables there. And that's where an animal went and ate fruit and ve- fruits and vegetables. Now, and this is where the Machlekes of Rav and Shmuel was said. Omar Rav, Rav said, Loishonu Elam Machzeres. When did we learn that if the animal eats from the side of the Rishus Rabin, that it would be chayef to pay full pay? That's if the animal is walking and it goes off its path and it eats from the side, so then you would be chayef to pay full pay. But if it's in this area, which a person designated to become part of the Rishus Rabin, and then he left his fruits and vegetables there, and the animal went there and ate over there, patura. If your animal goes and eats over there, your animal will be potter. Because now that he designated this area to the Rosh Hashanah, so your animal eating this person's fruits and vegetables that he left there is like the animal eating it in the Rosh Hashanah. So you'll be potter for this. It's, it's, now, it's been designated to the Rosh Hashanah. Shmuel Amar, however, Shmuel says, even if you designate this area to become part of the Rosh Hashanah, but nevertheless, Chayeves. If your animal goes and eats over there, <laughs> it will be chayiv to pay. You'll be chayiv to pay full damages for what it ate over there. So the Gemara explains what's the basis of their machlekes. I mean, this area wasn't it? Uh, didn't it become hefker now? Isn't it part of the Rishus Adam? So what are they arguing about? It says the Gemara Leme, shall we say that the basis of this argument is something else? The argument over here is when a person digs a pit in his own private property. And then that area where he dug the pit, he was mafkir, that, that area of the property, even though the actual bear itself that he dug is still his. It's his private pit that he dug. But he was mafkir the area where he dug this pit. So now there's an argument whether the one that dug this pit will be responsible for any of the damages that happened in this pit. So Rav, Dama Potter, Rav that says over here regarding allowing your animal to go and eat in this person's private property. So Rav says, you're going to be Potter for this. Why are you Potter? Your animal went now into an area which is now part of the Rishus Rabin. It's been designated to the Rishus Rabin. Why should you be Potter for this? The answer is, Kasava, it's because Rav holds, that if you dig a pit in your Rishus, and then your mafkir, the area over there around this bayr, and now other people can walk in there, you're going to be responsible for any of the damages that happens in this pit. Even though you dug this pit in your private property, and the pit is still your private pit, but nevertheless, because you were mafkir the area around, so now you have this pit that's in a place that is causing people to fall into it, you're going to be responsible for the damages that happen over here. So if you're leaving this bird in this Rishus Rabim, so that explains why Rav holds, if the animal comes and eats these fruits, the, you'll be potter for what the animal did. Because Adar Rabbe, the one, it's, not, it's, it's the opposite. The one that left his fruits there, why are you leaving your fruits in this area that you were mafkir to become part of the Rishus Rabim? You're leaving this bird, this stumbling block this, for, for, for animals to come over here. So if the animals will eat it, so then it's not my responsibility. You shouldn't have left these uh, fruits of here after you were mafka this place. That's yeah. Rav's opinion. Yeah. The, the halacha of Bayer in the Torah, yeah. it yeah. says it in the Rishus Rabbim, yeah. ki yeah. is in a yeah. Rishus yeah. Rabbim. Over here, it's in the Rishus Yachar. If I dig a pit in my private property and someone falls into this pit in my private property, you're going to be potter for that. That's up for sure. Everybody agrees to that. The Machlaikas though over here is in a case where you dug the pit in your private property and then you will mafkir that area and you allow people to walk in there. But it's still your private pit that you dug. Are you going to be responsible for this? So according to Rav, if you say you are going to be responsible for this, so then the behemoth that eats the fruits that you left there, you'll be potter for that. Shmuel dam chayev. However, Shmuel that says that chayev when your behemi eats these fruits, you're going to be chayev for this. Kesavar, it's because Shmuel holds boyer b'rishus se potter that the boyer that you left over here in your rishus, you're potter for this. The fact that you left that boyer there, that you're not responsible for, for, for. Because when I dug the boyer, I dug it in my private rishus. The Torah only obligates me. The responsibility is for a boyer that you dig in the rishus at Abim. So the behemi that goes and eats there. It's the owner of the behemoth that has to be careful not to allow his behemoth to go uh, and eat over there. And, so, and Rashi adds to this, 
the behemah went off its path. It's not, it's not the, the regular place where the behemah walks. The behemah went off its path into this area that was once a private property and you allowed your behemah to go and eat there. So therefore you're going to be high for this. That would seem to be the explanation of their machlekes. But the Gemara says it's not necessarily dependent on this halacha regarding bar. Amalach Rav, Rav will answer you no. Really, I can tell you, Ba'alma, usually my opinion is, Bayer Bereshusai Potter. When you dig a Bayer in your private Rishus and then you mafka that area around it, so you'll be Potter for the damages that happens here. But Vishani Hacha, in this case of here, where this person was mafka his property in front of, in the front yard, right in front of the Rishus Rabim, and then he leaves his fruits and vegetables there, the Omar, because you can say, Lav kol keminach the mekarvis lohu lepeiraisach lereshus harabim and mechayvus lohu teroi. You can't just go now and and put out your peiris over here right near the reshus harabim. And now by putting out your peiris over here in the reshus harabim, I should be chayiv for this. The fact that you go and put your peiris in the reshus harabim and it causes my animal to come here and eat from from it. So, so this is like my animal that's eating in the Rishus Arabim. Just like when an animal eats in the Rishus Arabim, so the owner is potter for this because why are you leaving your petis in the middle of the Rishus Arabim? So over here as well, when you put out petis in this area that you are mafkir in the Rishus Arabim, you can't expect me to guard my behemoth that it should not, uh, it should not uh, eat, eat your petis. So therefore you're going to be potter for this. On the other hand, Shmuel Oma, Shmuel will tell you, I can tell you that even if it's true, that usually when you dig a pit, and it was New York Rishos, and then you mafka that area, you'd be responsible for anyone that falls in and gets damaged there. But, but that's only by a bar, because the Bishlam, when it comes to a pit, you could say, you will mafka that area around the bar, not someone falls into the bar. So the one that fell into the bar or the animal, whatever it is that got damaged in the bar, you didn't notice it. So the one that dug that bar and left it there is responsible for this damage. Elopatis, but over here though, when it comes to the fruits that you can see right away, the fruits you see that are there. Could you say that you don't notice these fruits? The animal sees the fruits and that's why it comes and it damages these fruits. So therefore over here, when you see these fruits, so in such a case, you'll be chayef for this. You're responsible for, for the fr- fruits that uh, the animal came and, and ate. It went off its pathway and ate these fruits. You're going to be chayef for this. So it's not, it's not connected to this machleikus about bar. But the Gemara now goes back to the original subject that we brought up, the animal that's going on the road and it's turning off. It's turning to the side of the road. So Rav said, and according to one version, both uh, Rav and Shmuel agree, that when the animal turns to the side of the road, so for that, you're going to be chayef to pay full damages. So Lameh says the Gemara, shall we say, machzeres, when the animal turns away from its pathway, it goes to the side of the road. Tanoi, this is a machleikas tanoi, if you chayef for this. Because the Tanya we learned in the Braisa, achla mitoy charachba. And when the animal eats from the middle of the road, Shalem is mashananis, you only pay for the hana that it had, not the full damages. Mitzidei arachpa, if the animal eats from the side of the road, Mishalem is mashizika. So over here you have to pay for the full damages. Like it said in our Mishnah, it turned off to the side of the road, so you pay full damages. Divrei Rab Meir Rab Yehuda. This is the opinion of Rab Meir and Rab Yehuda. Rab Yaisi, Rab Laza Imrim, Rab Yaisi and Rab Laza argue and they say, Ein darka lechoil elo lahalich. It's not the, the derech, the regular behavior of an animal to eat. Rather, it's the derech of a behemoth to walk uh, on its way. So you know, it's not clear that what Rabbi Yaisi and Rabbi Lazar, what are they arguing about here? Rabbi Yaisi says the Gemara, Rabbi Yaisi, Hainu Tanakame. It would seem like Rabbi Yaisi is saying the same thing as the Tanakame. Why? So Rashi explains, because at this point, the Gemara thinks that the, the first point that the Tanakame said, that if the animal eats, from the middle of the road, you're going to be potter. Rabbi Yaisi agrees to that. That you learn from a pasik. Ubir, bizday, acher. They only pay for what you eat in someone else's private property. Not from the middle of the road. So Rabbi Yaisi has to be arguing only regarding the side of the road. That, and that's what Rabbi Yaisi is saying. That, that it walks in the middle of the road and it doesn't turn away to the side to eat. And if you eat from the side of the road, that then you would be chayiv. Well, that's the exact same point that Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yudha said. So what are they arguing about? Says the Gemara, so don't we have to say, Elo machzeres They're arguing about machzeres, when the animal turns off to the side of the road. Tanakam is sovar, the Tanakam says, machzeres, nami mishalem is mishalem ashananis. When the animal turns off to the side of the road, so you, you only pay mashananis. 
And Rabbi Yaisi Sava, and Rabbi Yaisi's opinion is that Mishalem is Mashizika, when the animal turns off to the side of the road, so then you have to pay for the full damages. Okay, so Rashi here explains that when you see in the Loshan of the Tanakhama, which is Rabbi Meir and Rabbi, and Rabbi Yehuda, what did he say? That Mitzide Harachva Mishalem is Mashizika, why did the Tanakhama say that you pay the full damages? It's because the animal didn't just turn off from the side of the road as it was walking. It means that the animal actually totally went there. Like we said before, Shmuel said the animal went to the side of the road. So then if the animal went there, so then the Tanakhama says that you have to pay. On that, Rabbi Yaisi is arguing, and Rabbi Yaisi says that no, even if the animal just turns off, even if it didn't go there, if it just turned off to the side of the road, that's enough that you pay the full damages. So it seems to be this machleik, this, this uh, case is the machleikis here. Says the Gemara Eloi, that's not necessarily the Machlaikis. We can say, the Kula Alme Machzeres, everybody would agree if the animal turns off from the side of the road, Ikerav, Ikishmul, either we would say like Rav, Rav says Yechayev, full pay, Ikishmul, or Shmul that says that you don't have to pay full pay. That's not what the argument of these Tanayim here is. But Vahacha, what are they arguing about? Bibir, Bizdeyacha, Kamifligi. This Pasik. That says, Ubir they only pay for what the animal eats if it's in someone's private property. They're actually arguing about this itself. Marsavar. The first opinion here is like we've been learning the entire time. Ubir the Torah says, only if your animal eats in someone's private property. That means if it eats in the Rishusarabim, you potter. That's Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda. Omar Sava and Rabbi Yaisi holds, Ubir when the Torah says, that you only hide if it eats in someone's private property. What is that coming to exclude? V'loi b'rishos hamazik. Not if the animal is if the animal that's eating is in the rishos of the mazik. You brought in, for example, someone else brought in his fruits into the rishos of the mazik, and there the animal ate. So for such a thing, you would be potter. Meaning, Rabbi Yaisi would disagree with the rule that we keep on saying the entire time that in the rishos harabim, if the animal eats his potter, Rabbi Yaisi holds no. The only time you pot it is, is if it's in the rishos of the mazik himself. He came into my private property. But in the rishos of Rabin, you would be chayiv. But the Gemara asks on this pshat, this can't be true. That's not what the Pasik is coming to say. Because the rishos of a mazik, does the Pasik have to say, if someone goes and brings his fruits into my private property, and then my animal goes and eats it, that you would be potted? That's what the Pasik has to say. Leme, the, the owner of this animal could say, Peirach Berishusi, my boy, why did you bring your fruits into my private property? Of course you potted. No one gave you the right to bring your fruits into my property. Hello, therefore the Gemara says, the, 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 the argument here between Rab Meir, Rab Yehuda, and Rab Yaisi is different. The Ilfe v'Rab Oishie Ikebenayu. What they're arguing about is the case that we had before, and a few, few blocks before in the Gemara, between Ilfe, both Ilfe and Rab Aishia brought this case, which is a case where the animal is walking in the Rishus Arabim, and it didn't eat fruits from the Rishus Arabim itself. It ate the fruits of the back of another animal, or ate the fruits of a basket that a person was carrying. Are you going to be high for that? So the Tanakhama over here, Rab, Rab, Rab Mei and Rab Yehuda hold that if the animal eats, from, uh, even from the basket, or even from the back of another animal, you'll still be chayv. That's still considered to be the, 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 the animal that's walking in the Rishus Sarabim. So if you ate from the, the Rishus Sarabim, uh, sorry, the Tanakama holds you'll be potter. Correct. Because it's still considered to be something which is in the Rishus Sarabim and your potter. Whereas Rabbi Yaisi comes to say, that's the Lashon that Rabbi Yaisi says, Ein darka lechel el halech, that the animal walks, the fact that it jumped up to eat, from another animal's back that has a package or from someone else's uh, basket. So for that, you're going to be chayiv because that's not the normal behavior of the animal. And for that, you'd be chayiv. So that was the argument here of Rab Meir and Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yaisi when it ate from someone's back, from another animal's back or someone's basket. If somebody's dog or somebody's uh, goat went and, uh, and jumped <clears throat> from, from the top of, uh, from a rooftop. Okay, so what happened over here is someone allowed his dog or goat to go and jump on someone else's roof. And then they jumped off his roof into his private property. Vishabru is a kalim, and there in this person's private property, they broke, they broke his vessels. So Mishalem Nezik Shalem, you pay full damage for this. Because a dog and a goat are, 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 this is usual behavior for them, even though usually this is a wild kind of behavior and you should only pay chatzin nezek. But for a dog and a goat, this is normal behavior and therefore you pay full damages for this. 
Another halacha regarding what a dog does, hakelev shenot pacharara. We had this quoted before in the Gemara. A dog that takes a uh, a biscuit or a uh, loaf of bread, and it took it together with coals as well. It took it from an oven and it took it together with coals. Then vaholach legodish. It went to someone else's property where there's a pile of grain. Ochal acharara. The dog ate up the the loaf of bread. Vehidlik agodish, and then it dropped a coal into the pile of, of grain and it, it, it lit it on fire. So Allah Kharada Mishal Nazik Shalim. For the bread that it ate, so that's shame. You pay full damages for this. Vala Godish, but for the pile that it lit on fire, Mishal Khatzinezek. For that you only pay Khatzinezek. The Gemara will explain we had before the Gemara said that this is considered to be like Tsraitis. Okay, the Gemara will later explain this. I mean, the Gemara goes back to the first case of the Mishnah. What did it say in the Mishnah? That the person's dog or goat jumped on, the, on someone's roof and then it jumped off the roof and it damaged Caleb. Says the Gemara, time at the Kofzu. The reason why you have to pay for the damages that your dog did is because the dog jumped on the roof and then it jumped off. So that's something that you could expect your dog to do. So you have for this. How about if the dog jumped onto the roof? And then it didn't jump off, it fell off the roof. Then Potter. You would understand from the Mishnah that you would be putter if it falls off and it falls onto someone's vessels and it breaks it. You would be putter for that. Why? Says the Gemara. What you can prove from here is Alma. What I see from our Mishnah is Kesava. The Tan of our Mishnah holds Tchilasai B'Pshia, a case where the damage began with a negligence on your part. What? What's the negligence? You allowed your dog to jump on this person's roof or on his wall of his property. And then the seifei be'aynis, but then in the end, the animal didn't jump off like it usually would, but then it just fell off. And that's something which you couldn't expect to happen. That was an aynis. Potter, for such a thing, if it only fell off in the end, it happened with an aynis, you'd be potter, even though the beginning of the damage was caused by a negligence. Tanya mm-hmm. Nami we learned the same thing in Gak. If you have a dog or a goat that jumps off from someone's roof, Vishavres Akelim, and they broke vessels that were there, Mishal Nazik Shalom, you have to pay full pay. So what do we see from here? Naflu peturin. If, if, but however, no, the Brisa then clearly says though, if, if it uh, fell off though, if the dog or the, the goat fell off, you'll be potter. So now the Gemara asks, this is understood, Lamanda Omar, according to the opinion that says, and this is brought here later in the Mesechte, Tchilasu Bipshia, Vesayfe Bainis, if there's a damage that happens, and in the beginning it was a negligence in your part, and in the end there was an Aynis that happened, so pot, you'd be pot for this. But El but there's another pain that says that even though in the end there was an anus, but if in the beginning it was a negligence, why did you allow your dog to jump onto the roof? Chayev, you should be chayev, so Michael Amema. Why are you here if you allowed your dog to jump onto someone else's roof, even though later it fell down, why should you be pot for this? And says the Gemara, the case of here is Kagoin the Mikarvi Kalim Legabi Kaisel, that the vessels were very, very close to the Kaisel. They were mamish right near this wall that the uh, dog jumped onto, the chikovtzi, because now even if you allowed your dog to jump onto the onto the onto this wall or onto this roof, the kvitze loynafli alayu. If this dog that jumped onto this wall would have jumped off, they wouldn't have broken the vessels. Because when it, when it jumps off the off the roof or when it jumps off the wall, it cannot jump off right near the wall where the vessels are. So you were paying attention. You saw that the vessels are right near the wall, so therefore the fact that you allowed your animal, your, your dog to jump onto the roof, it's not gonna cause any damage to this person's vessels. The vessels are protected, they're right near the wall. So there is no negligence on your part at all. So there is no negligence that you're allowing your dog to jump up over there. So if it ends up falling down, you're gonna be putter because when it fell, what happened? When it fell, it doesn't jump far, it falls right near the wall and then it breaks those vessels. But there's no negligence on your part because you, you didn't expect it to fall. And uh, it, when it jumped up, you saw that the vessels are not right near the wall. So over here, there's no negligence at, at all. One more Allah will learn over here. Sometimes, even if your dog fell down, you're also going to be high for this. And when is that? Even though it's an oinus, when it falls down, that's if this is a very shaky wall. Then you're going to be chayv if the dog falls down from this wall. It is your negligence. 
So the Gemara explains, what does this mean? My Nia, what exactly is the negligence over here? The Ibaile La Suke Daite, is it, is the negligence the fact that when you wall climbs up, well, sorry, when your dog that is, climbs up to a very, very uh, shaky wall, so then this is irresponsible because what you should be thinking is the Nafal Archi, that maybe one of the bricks is going to fall because your dog is climbing on this very shaky wall. Mm-hmm. So that's negligence. Says the Gemara, but, sof, sof, le no, le archi. but it, it, that's not what happened here though. The bricks did not end up falling. It's the dog that fell off. So why, why is there any negligence on your part if in the end none of the bricks fell even though it's a shaky wall? Only the dog fell off. So therefore, so therefore this is a case of there was a negligence on your part in the beginning. You shouldn't allow your dog to climb on a shaky wall because bricks could fall and break things. But in the end, the bricks didn't fall down. It's just the, the dog that fell down. So you should be part of this, at least according to one opinion. And so the Gemara, no, what Avzvid meant is something else, because the case of here is that this is a very narrow wall and you allow your dog to climb onto this wall so you could expect your dog to fall off this wall. It's such a narrow wall that when it ends up falling, the whole thing is your negligence that you allowed your dog to climb onto it and it falls down and it breaks uh, vessels there. So you're higher for this.